Great Lake. Good evening, good evening, <clears throat> good evening. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're certainly thankful and grateful to the Almighty God for uh, giving us another opportunity to uh, study His Word and to once again be with the people of God that we might study His Word together. We're thankful and grateful that in spite of all that's going on, we know that God is still good and He is worthy to be praised. All right, let us begin with our theme song. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. God has smiled on me. He has said me free God smile on me he's been good to me amazing grace how sweet the sound saved a wretch like me. I was for lost, but now I'm found. But blind, but now I see. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are thankful and grateful for another opportunity to come before thy throne of grace and to bow and turn thee some humble thanks. We thank you, O God, that things are as well as they are. For we realize that had justice been served, we would have been cut off from this walk of life a long time ago. But we're glad that you have seen fit to bless our golden moments to roll on a little while longer. And for that, we say thank you, sir. We thank you, O oh God, for even though we are going through some, some hard and difficult times, yet you've given us the strength and the courage to persevere. And we thank you for that. We thank you, O oh Lord, for a reasonable portion of health and strength for we realize that with all of the sickness that is around us you have kept us safe and you have kept us uh, healthy and that for that we are thankful and grateful we thank you oh God and we praise you and we ask you right now in the name of Jesus look on our city our city is still in turmoil and there are many that are going off to do their own thing rather than following the sound advice of those who know what it's all about we thank you oh god for when we felt like giving up you gave us the encouragement of heart to just hang in there a little while longer we ask you right now that you would look on this entire nation for we're going through a serious problem right now. And only you can make cooler heads prevail. 
So right now, in the name of Jesus, touch all of our leaders, national leaders, our local leaders. Touch them right now, oh God, for they are having a very difficult time. Some want to do one thing and some want to do another. But nobody's talking about doing your will. We ask you right now in the name of Jesus, let the church folk be on one accord. Let us be of the same mind. Let us be one with one another. We ask this not because of who we are, but because of who you are. Right now in the name of Jesus, we ask this in all blessings. Amen, amen, and amen. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking, uh, as we continue to talk about powerful praying, tonight we're going to be talking about how understanding God's kingdom, understanding God's kingdom. Now, uh, we've been basically doing this and learning how to be a powerful prayer, we've basically been studying the Lord's Prayer. And tonight we continue with uh, Matthew 6 and 10. And Matthew 6 and 10 begins by saying, Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. That's the A part of the verse is understanding God's kingdom. In our last lesson, we learned hallowed be thy name is the first and most important petition to make when we pray. If in everything we say and do, we are making God's name hallowed, then we will be helping make the next petition in the Lord's Prayer a reality. The second petition is, Thy kingdom come. Matthew 6, 10, and the A part of the verse. If we are to have a journey into powerful prayer, our first priority must be to make God's name hallowed. Our second priority should be to pray for God's kingdom to come. To know how to pray this petition properly, we must answer three questions. And the first question that's on this list tonight is, where is God's kingdom? And how can we help bring God's kingdom to earth? I know you never thought about that. Uh, you probably never even thought about it. And I know some of my theological brethren will will uh, will get on my case for calling it the Lord's Prayer. But that's what I was taught from the time I was a little boy up until a few years ago when we discovered some way, somehow, that it wasn't the Lord's Prayer. It was something else. But the Holy Spirit had told them folk Back then, when I was a boy, it was the Lord's Prayer, and that's how everybody was presenting it. And that's something we're going to have to get out of doing. We just can't start changing stuff because we think we know something. When it's been that way all for years and years and centuries, we just can't do it because we think we know. We got to wait on the Holy Spirit to reveal it to us and not be going off our knowledge. Go off the knowledge of God. What is God's kingdom? God's kingdom refers to his dominion in our world. A kingdom requires a king or a monarch. Jesus first, we must look at Jesus' first recorded words as an adult. In Mark 1 and 15, in Mark 1 and 15, and this comes from the New King James, it says, And saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent 
and believe in the gospel. The time is fulfilled. That is the time appointed to send the Messiah and particularly the time specified by Daniel 9, 24 and 27. Here are four points worthy of deeper attention. And you can get this if you want to, you can write these down. In the preaching of the Son of God, when Jesus was here on earth, here's what Jesus was preaching about talking about the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Notice how simple Jesus made that. And look how complicated we've made everything because we think we got a little knowledge. All right. The first thing about his preaching was everything that is done is according to a plan laid by the divine wisdom and never performed till the time appointed was full was filled up again everything that is done in accordance to a plan laid by the divine wisdom and never performed till the time appointed was filled up. That's the first thing in the sentence in Mark 1.15. The time is fulfilled. In other words, it's time for it to happen. We try to push stuff and make it happen when we want it to happen. I want to get married, and I want to get married now. But you're praying, Lord, send me a husband. Lord, send me a wife. You're not going to get what you're asking for until the time is filled. Lord, I need a financial blessing. You're not going to get a financial blessing until God knows that you will be appreciative of a financial blessing. Lord, I need a better job. You don't appreciate the little job that you got? Why would he give you a better one? Now, I could go into something else about that, but I'm going to leave that alone. Let that slide for now. Um, let's look at that's number one. Number two, when he was preaching, he was saying, he was saying, until the time comes for the plan, the divine plan, which is planned out by divine wisdom until that time comes it ain't finna happen the second thing is Jesus was saying that the kingdom and the reign of sin are to be destroyed and the kingdom of grace and heaven established in their place now you know good and well that right now the kingdom of sin has not been destroyed because we are sinners by nature born sinners will come into the world sinners conceived in sin shapen in iniquity come out of the womb sinner we are Children of disobedience by nature. And Jesus said, until that, until the kingdom and the reign of sin are destroyed, the kingdom of grace and heaven is established in its place. That's got to happen. That's not. That's when that kingdom, we need to be trying to urge in the kingdom. By praying and asking God to clean us up. The kingdom of God. Number three. And I, I got I got to move. I got to be to a certain point. So I got to move. The kingdom of God. And his reign by grace. 
begins with repentance from past sins. When you repent from your past sins and worry about what's going to happen on the mark, when you repent from what you've already done, tomorrow will take care of itself. You got to repent from, for, for, from what you've already done, from, from the sins you've already committed. You've got to repent. You have to become godless sorrow, sorrowful from what you've already done. Worry about what you might do in the next hour or the next 30 minutes. Worry about what you have already done and repent. The grace that Jesus is talking about, the reign of grace that he's talking about, he's talking about that reign of grace is at hand and that nothing but an obstinate perseverance in sin and impedance can keep any soul out of it. And that now is the accepted time to enter in. In other words, if you repent, stop doing wrong, repent, Change your way of thinking. The only thing that's going to keep you out of the kingdom is if you keep thinking the wrong way, got bad attitude, can't get along with nobody, always fussing and fighting. We used to have old country expressions. Shucking and jiving. Keep shucking and jiving. Perseverance. Obstinate. Perseverance. Elections were rigged. Obstinate. Perseverance. Some of us are like that we're seeing. We know something wrong, but we keep saying, ain't nothing wrong with it. Because you don't want to quit. I got news for you. You're going to quit one one day, one way, or the other. The gospel of the kingdom of God. Christ came to set up the kingdom of God among men. That they might be brought into subjection to it and might obtain salvation in it. And he set up, it's set up by the preaching of his gospel and power going and the power going along with it. The kingdom of God is set up by the preaching of the gospel. Now, I like to sing just like everybody else. But when you want to really get down to the gospel, you got to preach it. Nowhere in the Bible does it say it's singing the gospel. We're saying it says preaching the gospel. We're saying the gospel. Not a prosperity gospel. Not a gospel that's going to heal your body because you got cancer. Not a gospel that's going to show you how to pick the right wife or husband. But the gospel, his gospel. The gospel of the king. The gospel is simple. 
simple gospel. It's real, real simple. Jesus came to earth, died to save sinners, that whosoever believe in him shall be saved. Simple. We cannot understand what it is to be a Christian unless we know what the kingdom of God is. And to understand God's kingdom, we must first realize there are two kingdoms in this world. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of, evil, of the evil one. Look what Jesus says in John 16 and 11. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. In the gospel, Jesus refers three times to the devil as the prince of this world. The word translated prince means ruler or magistrate. Satan is not king of this world. He is simply a temporary ruler because God's kingdom is coming to destroy Satan's rule. God's kingdom is coming to destroy Satan's rule of this world. Satan run a lot of stuff. But he can only do what God allows him to do. You can run a lot of stuff. But you can only do what the law allows you to do. And if you don't do what the law says, they got a place for you. It's called jail. When you, when you, when you get out there on the highway, you can drive down the road and you can drive as fast as you want. But nowadays, when you get home, you'll get a letter in the mail saying, on sudden such a day and sudden such time and sudden such place, you were clocked at. Please send your money. And they have an address. And if this money is not received by a certain date, it's going to be two well-dressed fellas sitting at your door saying, come on, go with us. Now, ain't you glad the Lord ain't like that? Because a lot of us, because of our sins that we refuse to repent of, he would be to send somebody to the door to take you and lock you up. Satan rules, but he can only do what God allows him to do. And God's kingdom is coming to destroy Satan's rule. When Jesus is on trial just before his crucifixion, Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? John 18 and 33. Since Jesus' enemies are accusing him of sedition and setting up a, re a rebellion, a rebel government against Rome, Pilate is asking about an earthly king and kingdom. Sedition, that word is going to be coming up more and more in the next few weeks. We're going to be hearing that word more and more. Y'all keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. You're going to be hearing that more and more. Sedition. A rebellious government. A rebel government. You keep your eyes and ears open. Unless something changes, this is where we are headed. Pilate said, Are you about to set up a kingdom here on earth? Are you about to become an earthly king and go against the Roman Empire? Are you about to do something like that? But let's look at how Jesus responds to Pilate. In John chapter 18, 
verse 36, in a part of that 36 verse, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. John 18 and 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. And he goes on to say, if my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. In other words, what Jesus was saying, my, the kingdom of God is not earthly, but spiritual. God's spiritual kingdom can be, div and when you look at it, God's spiritual kingdom can be divided into three different parts. We are not going. We are not going to get into those tonight. Because we try to, we start getting into that tonight. We'll, we'll go too far down there, and 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 we'll go way over our time. We'll save. We'll save part of this for next week. We'll save that part for next week. In other words, God's kingdom is not earthly, but spiritual. There are a lot of folks claiming to be part of the spiritual kingdom, but the way they do things, the way they walk, the way they talk, a lot of what they do say is that they're they're not they're they're not of the spiritual kingdom. They got their own agenda. And usually it's driven by money, prestige, power. But I read somewhere the other day where it said the love of money is the root of all. Not some, but it's the root of all evil. The love of money. I'm not talking about the way Rev. Mike used to put it. Rev. Mike said the lack of money is the root of all evil. No, the Bible said the love of money is the root of all evil. You love money too much, it's going to cause you to do evil. Just trying to get on, just trying to get yourself another nickel. I remember watching Kung Fu years ago when before he left the temple to go out into the world to learn uh before he went out there to learn he um there was an episode where they had a a, a chimpanzee there and they had put an apple in a vase and the monkey could reach his hand into the vase could grab hold to the apple, but he couldn't pull his hand out with the apple in it. And he was sitting there sending out a distress signal because he couldn't get his hand out of the vase. And the lesson that young Cain had to learn, or the lesson that Grasshopper had to learn, was that sometimes in order to get your hand out of danger, you have to let go of whatever you've grabbed hope to. Pour your hand out, tilt the vase, and pour whatever is in the vase out. Cause you can't reach in and take it out with your hand. You gotta pour it out. In other words, unless you're willing to give up you'll never receive what's in the vase because you're trying to hold on to it. And you can't hold on to it. 
You cannot hold on to your past sins and receive the spiritual blessings from God. You got to let them go. Got to turn them loose. Let them go. Then you can make a fresh start. All right. That's my time. Didn't mean to. Uh, we're coming up on uh, next week. And uh, I want to say this. Uh, thanks, everybody, for for Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. Y'all did. Y'all y'all made me y'all made me blush. Now, Sunday. Y'all already know what you're gonna get Sunday. That's Sunday for Christmas. So you know what you're gonna get Sunday. The Christmas story. And then the Lord willing on Christmas morning. I got to I got to double check the time. I'll get the word out to you. I got to double check the time that um uh we're gonna have uh we're gonna have uh uh, what I call a fireside chat Christmas morning. Uh, we're not going to talk about what Santa Claus brought us, but we're going to talk about how good God been to us. And anybody uh, tune in on the uh, conference line, you can uh, you can talk, and we'll be talking back and forth. And if I can figure it out. I may even try my hand at uh, answering some folk on the live feed. But that is what we are thinking about for right now. All right. It's been a good day. And we are certainly glad to be of service. Now, if all minds are clear, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are thankful and grateful that you, O oh God, have allowed us another opportunity to not only study your word, but to study it with your people. We thank you, O oh God, and we praise you for it. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you continue to allow us to grow in grace and grow in faith. We ask, O oh God, that you keep your arms of protection around us. Keep us safe from all sickness and diseases. Keep us safe from all of the crime and those that will hurt us for no good reason. We ask, O oh God, that you touch the minds and hearts of men and women all over the world. That we, O oh God, would move closer to thee. And remembering the words of the text that says that my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Then when thou heal from heaven, and I will heal their land. Heal the land tonight, O oh God. Heal the land. Only you can heal it. We can try, but we can't do it without you. Watch over us and keep us safe. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen.